This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. I'm ready to talk with uh, one of our esteemed guests once again here. This is a show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling celebrating this uh, fine, fine uh, establishment, I guess. Tradition. Yeah. Tradition. Regional tradition <laughs> of sorts. We'll get to our guests in a moment. But please, in the meantime, check out the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Subscribe on all those platforms. Please rate us, share us. And, of course, video versions are on the YouTube and the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show and over on IndieWrestling.us. Of course, where you can find a lot of these guys. Look up the names and you'll find a lot of shows with them. And you can help support Indie Wrestling that way. And, of course, thanks to our Patreon supporters, Patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show where you guys literally help keep the lights on and unfortunately pay for internet that is not too great and we're gonna fix that very very soon trust us the, the fiber is coming i swear the fiber is coming uh but anyways uh, I re- i've been uh really looking forward to get back uh, a return guest on here uh we had him several years ago uh i i looked it up june 2015 he joined us last, but Dylan Bostic, the the Justin Bieber of professional wrestling. No, 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 no we're no, not that no anymore. Oh, Bieber, not, no, not no, anymore. Because no. no. that was a big thing last time. Yeah. Now I'm money weight. So you oh, know. money weight. Yeah, money weight. Money weight. See, I, see, I, I've I've seen since you've come back. I've seen you on two shows with IWC. So I haven't seen a lot of the stuff you're doing. I've, I've caught a little bit of a. Uh, 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 wrestling from Hollywood, of course. Championship wrestling from Hollywood. I want to get into that uh, as well. Uh, but you know, we talked with you last, like I said, in, in 2015, you were just before we had you on the same show with Ray Rowe, yep. who's been doing also amazing stuff, uh, uh, since last speaking with him, a lot of it in Japan. Uh, and, and you had some travels as well, but you, it was just before you were getting into the really interesting stuff with your IWC career. So I, I want to talk about that a little bit because okay. you know that that is a platform and everything because yeah. you were you were in, integral in that for a while. Yeah, I mean, before we talk about that though, I want to talk about this. So on Facebook, <laughs> I'm looking through and I just see Pro Wrestling Tees advertisement pops up. Um, yeah, you can go to prowrestlingtees.com backslash Dylan Bostic right now and save five percent on your purchase of a Who Sucks Now T-shirt using the coupon code Save Five. Five is the le- uh, the number, not like spelling it out. But anyway, I just wanted to you know say that right now. I was like, oh, cool, an advertisement with me. Uh, I can make some money. That's cool. Anyway, I'm gonna share that. You know what? I'm gonna share that. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, when we- when I was on here last, that was uh, pretty much like the I would say the beginning of my run in IWC, and um, yeah, it was pretty cool because we were we were interviewing uh, about the Super Indie, my first ever Super Indie uh, tournament. Well, actually, my only Super ever uh, Super Indie tournament that I was ever in. Um, which I uh, didn't I win that? I, I, play, I think you won that. Oh, oh, who all was in that tournament? Uh, oh yeah, I won. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I think including Ray Rowe in the in the finals as well. Yeah, who cares about him? Oh, oh yeah. Anyway, let's talk about me. But uh, anyway. Um, went on, you know, uh, defended the super indie title for all the way up until December and, a, a really good match with Andrew palace, which no one cares about him either. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I really enjoyed my time, um, and IWC and while I've been out on the West coast and stuff, yeah, I've always missed, uh, IWC and, you know, I'm really looking forward to Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're taking on, uh, Jimmy Vegas, which, you know, of people to pick a fight with. He's probably the biggest and scariest they have down there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really care. Yeah, he's pretty big. Uh, <laughs> but like I was telling you earlier, I'm no longer the Justin Bieber of wrestling. I'm no. money weight Dylan Bostic. Okay. Because um, I don't really care how big he is. I don't care. All I'm in it for is for the money, you know? Uh, t- tell me about this, cha- this change to money weight. Um, I Obviously, you know, you've been uh, uh, kind of out for a bit, you know, developing a, a bit more. How did money weight come about? Um, you know, there's... <sighs> 
there's always been like a thing about me. Oh, Dylan Bostic is isn't a big guy. Da 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 da. And oh, Dylan Bostic's wrestling this guy that's too big. Like even whenever I wrestled Billy Gunn, people were like, "Oh, Dylan Bostic's way too small to wrestle him." And that was about a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, but that's not the case, you know. I don't really care. I'm I'm in it for the money, so I don't care how big the opponent is. I'm just wrestling whoever's going to make me the most money and. I guess Jimmy Vegas is the one that's going to make me some money Saturday. There you go. And of course, it's the big blow off show for the big the big year end WrestleMania show for uh, IWC, basically, uh, coming up to the Core Time Sports Center uh, this week. Um, so, like I say, you, you went to this, the West Coast, and I, I've you know been following your Instagram and your social media uh, since you've been out there. And I know uh, I've been able to catch up a little bit here and there on Fight TV with uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Which has actually been in the news a bit lately as well. Um, I was really impressed because it's 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 an it's an ongoing television show that they're doing out there. I, I presume it's on local TV, from what I could tell. Yeah, it's it's on a uh, KDOC in LA, which is a really good channel. There's billboards all over Los Angeles, so KDOC is a big channel. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and it's on in San Diego. I mean, it's on all all across the country. Not only on uh, the CW network, but there's a lot of channels and stuff that you don't really know about that are like local channels and stuff yeah. like that. But um, but yeah, man, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood is doing some big things, and uh, Dave Marquez he knows what he's doing, and and uh, I. Definitely believe that Dave Marquez is going to take that company to the top for mm-hmm. sure. I mean, it's something that um, definitely has a lot of uh, TV production value and everything. Um, and I know you've spent some time, you know, we've talked about before about you, you've done some time with WWE uh, uh, for some spots and everything. Is it is it beneficial to a company like that to have that TV time, you know, to uh, learn that versus you know the indie shows where maybe there's a camera (laughs) right um i will say that championship wrestling from hollywood next to like with ovw as well like those are the two companies that i've worked for that were very close to wwe Mm -hmm. um like they're just championship wrestling from Hollywood is so professional there's so many people in the back that are helping making sure things run smoothly like there's I don't even know how many people that work backstage and producers and, you know, agents and stuff. And, um, it, it's crazy how, how on it they are. And it, it's just a super, super professional company. And, and, um, I think it, it's a, it's a great place for anybody to go to work. Um, especially to get ready. If you like, you really want to wrestle for WWE one day, I would suggest championship wrestling from Hollywood because that's, what's going to get you ready for the big times. Absolutely. And, and, and like I mentioned, there've been, uh, the news lately with the, uh, natural, uh, NWA national wrestling Alliance. Uh, of course, Bill Corgan of smashing pumpkins has been doing it. They've been doing 10 pounds of gold and it's been featured a lot on that. I noticed. Yeah. You know what? Um, I really, really hope that the NWA succeeds, but, um, the thing is, I don't really care about Tim Storm, and uh, if Billy Corgan and and uh, Dave Lagana are paying attention and they want a real champion, uh, money ma- money weight is where it's at. And um, but yeah, I I really hope it succeeds, and I really hope that they continue to work with Championship Wrestling from Hollywood um, because that just makes my chances even greater. Absolutely, uh, you mentioned you know when we were we were tweeting about you being on the show tonight, uh, NSPW. NSPW is uh, the TV show that I do in Quebec City, Canada, um, which my next match with them is dis- or is uh, January 13th, not December 13th. I just wrestled for them. Whew, boy, it's been a long day. But anyway, uh, January 13th, I'm going to be wrestling Marcus Burke inside a steel cage in the main event for the NSPW Television Championship. It's going to be a big match. That's great. And that's a, that's a territory that's been... Um... I guess kind of insulated. One one can think uh, uh, up until recently uh, with uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, of course. But I think you know, shine some light on that area, right? Yeah, I mean that area is doing so good. I mean, every show that I've done has been completely packed. So a couple of them were completely sold out to where they couldn't yes. let any any more people in. Um, but I mean, there's 500 to 800 people every show. They're into it, loud. They're ready to spend money. I mean, Quebec City is is great. I really like go. I really like going to Quebec City. Mm. So, what what happened that that you know you're traveling basically all over the country, and I we know a lot of guys that you know they do get to a bunch of different places. Some of our friends are of the show are are now kind of traveling internationally and everything now. 
Um, but there are still ones that are, you know, they'll get to Jersey, they'll get to Chicago, you know, things like that. But you're like, uh, it looks like on a semi-regular basis, still going to L.A. Yep. Uh, you're going all the way up to Montreal, which is not a, you know, it's not a short hike uh, either. Plus yeah. a border in the in there, which also has to be very interesting. Um, what changed that, that you and, and even, Ray, you know, Ray Lynn as well you know, are, are taking these hikes? Uh you know, it's it's wrestling is about making a name for yourself and wrestling in front of the same audience every month or every week or whatever the case is. It's not really going to do anything for you if you're trying to really make it in this business. And yeah, um, like you like, you know, like I, I took some time away from IWC because I was in IWC for a couple of years. And it's just like, you know, I love IWC. But if I don't go to other you know companies, I don't go in front of other crowds and stuff like no one's going to know me. So, um, like when I graduated high school, I moved to Tampa, Florida, trying to get an FCW with WWE, but then, uh, moved from there to Louisville, Kentucky, spent a few years in, in Louisville for, for OVW. Um, then went from OVW in Louisville to Pittsburgh and I started wrestling around here and, and, and you know, traveling all OVW over under uh, rip Rogers. I know. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, after, after here, I went to, to LA and, and started my thing on the West coast because the West, the West coast audience hasn't really seen me yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's all about that. And now that I'm in the, uh, you know, the spot in my career to where I can get, you know, people to pay for flights for me. Mm -hmm. So now I can wrestle in Quebec city and, and Los Angeles, California, and, you know, travel all over even more. Um, the crazy thing about the Quebec city dates and the Los Angeles dates is for some reason, every time Quebec city is on a Saturday night. And then the very next day, and it's, it's an early show in LA too. It's, it's 3 PM in the afternoon is Hollywood. So I've successfully done that four or five times now, but if people have, you know, if you've seen the, the, the Twitter rant that I've been on, um, mm -hmm. I did not make it to the, to the TV taping this Sunday in Hollywood, um, due to some weather and, you know, that was whatever, but the, uh, airline definitely screwed me over. So there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to have to deal with. If you want to travel on a, you know, a crazy schedule like me, yeah. you're not going to sleep in a bed for like three or four days. If you're on the road, three or four days and all kinds of different places and flights and cars and whatever. Um, it's definitely really hectic. So it's a lot of stress. Jeez. Yeah. yeah I, I've seen, I've seen the tweets where like you, you'll pop up your schedule and I'm just like, Wait, is that physically possible? <laughs> yeah, my my friend uh, Jason Ayers in the WWE, um, he commented on the the schedule. I think it was like a month or two ago, where it was on Thursday night. I was in Quebec City. Uh, Saturday night, I was in Philadelphia, and then Sunday, I was in LA. And he was like, "Dude, who booked that?" I was like, "Well, you know who booked that? I'm nuts. I don't care." <laughs> and, and I think about it, DJ Z, of course, has his uh, fake fights and missed flights, you know, where he's notorious for messing up his flights as well. And, <laughs> I mean, it's, like, was this this recent West Chat thing like kind of your worst horror story of just not making it? It was. It was definitely like. At first, I was like, wait, am I sleeping? Is this like a bad dream? Mm -hmm. Because like, I got to the airport, I got on my flight, I was sitting on the plane, and they said, oh, it'll be a couple minutes, we're just waiting on a couple more people, and I'm like, okay, cool, and I'm sitting there, and I'm literally about to go to sleep, because I haven't went to sleep yet, because I'm taking this overnight flight to get to LA, and uh, I, I'm sitting there, and then they go, hey, um, we got we got to you know tell you some bad news, guys, uh, you're there's going to be about an hour delay. All flights into Toronto or all flights out of Toronto um, are delayed due to fog. And I'm like, okay, that's no big deal. My layover in Toronto is going to be is going to be pretty long, um, so I'm not I'm not going to miss my connecting flight or whatever. I get off. Um, I go sit down. Or right, before I sit down, I ask the lady. I said, hey, um, is it how long do you think it's going to be? Because I have a layover in Toronto. Da 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 da. I'm going to L.A. I got a TV show. And she's like, oh, it'll be about an hour. Uh, we'll call you up if anything changes. I'm like, okay, cool. So I sit down and uh, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And about two hours goes by. And now I'm like, okay, I'm going to miss that connecting flight. I need to go up there. So I get in line. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally I get up there. It's been about two and a half hours since I got off the plane. I said, hey, I'm going to miss that flight in, in Toronto to LA. She's like, oh, you're, you're Bostic, right? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, okay, yeah. Um, there's going to be, what did she say? I'm trying to remember how many hours she said. I think she said there's going to be about three more hours. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I can't, I can't wait three more hours. I'm not going to make it to LA in time for the show. And uh, 
she's like, yeah, uh, it doesn't look like you're going to get there until like in the evening or at night. I'm like, oh man. So my flight leaving the, the flight that I got through Hollywood, um, for, through championship wrestling from Hollywood was departing at nine 30. And she gave me my new ticket. I didn't think to look at it because I told her, oh, my flight departs from L.A. at 930 to get back home to Pittsburgh. And I didn't think to look at it. She says, oh, OK, I'll make sure you get there in time. I'm like, all right, cool. So I get to Toronto and I look at my next ticket and it says that my uh, my flight will be landing in L.A. at 930. So I'm like, oh, great. So I uh, get on my phone, I call WestJet Airline Services, and I say, hey, um, I need to change my final destination to Pittsburgh because um, because um, I'm not going to get to LAX in time because I was supposed to do a TV show, and then I was supposed to fly home, but I'm actually going to miss my flight home now because we're so late at this point. Like, I'm five over five hours late. Like, there's no way I'm going to make it. And... Uh, the lady's like, oh, well, I can't really help you, da-da-da-da-da. You got to contact the person that you got your ticket through, da-da-da-da-da. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I hang up with her. No big deal. I call the uh, the promoter in Quebec. I'm like, hey, this is what they told me, da-da-da-da-da. I need you to contact the, uh, the travel agent and see what he can do, whatever. The travel agent says, oh, go to the guest services desk, and, they'll, and they'll, they'll take care of it for you, and they'll change your final destination. So I'm like, okay, cool. Um... I go to the to the line for guest service desk, and because of all these delays, I mean, this was the longest line I've ever seen in my life. And because, these, because you're not the only one being affected. No, by this and, and these people are like, they're like, once you make it to the counter, you're at the counter for a minute. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm at the counter. Oh, help me out, and then you're done. Like, no, dude, you're standing at the counter for like forever. So I stand in this line for three and a half hours, right? And at this point, I have I've still not eaten. Like, I'm starving. Like, I just want to eat food and go home. And this is like in the evening, too. So I think it was like four, four o'clock or five o'clock. Um, and I haven't eaten anything. So I finally get up to the desk and I start telling the guy, da 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 da, this is what I need to do. He said, Oh, well, I can change your uh, time to land a little bit early, maybe. Let me see what I can do. And I said, Dude, I just want to go home. I was like, But if that's the only thing you can do, like, whatever. And he goes, Oh, I can get you there at nine. I said, dude, it's LAX. My plane is going to start boarding at nine o'clock. Like, and he's like, oh yeah, that's like the biggest airport on earth. Yeah. You're not going to make that. Like, okay. Unless you're lucky in the same terminal, right? Yeah. So I said, all right, man, can you just change my final destination to Pittsburgh? I don't care if it's tomorrow or when, like, and if it's extra, I'll pay extra. It doesn't matter. I just want to go home. Like I need to go home somehow. And he goes, Nah, man, I can't because uh, we're not we're not liable for for anywhere you go. All we're liable for is you to go to Pitts or to go to L.A. or back to Quebec City. So if you want to go back to Quebec City, I can do that. And I said, no, I need to go to Pittsburgh. And he's like, well, I can't help you. And I'm like, OK, so what do I do now? I'm stranded like I have nowhere to go. And he goes, well, you can just cancel your flight and buy a flight and get yourself to Pittsburgh. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you want me to cancel my flight and pay four hundred dollars just to get home because of mis- you know this mistake? Yeah, like yeah. this is ridiculous. And yep. So that's what happened. So I ended up having to cancel and pay four hundred dollars just to get home. Jeez. Yep. And that that is that is rough on indie wrestling. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Oh man, that's great. Uh, as that's that's so so and and I've, I've i've been so fortunate i've been doing a lot of traveling and not seeing anything that bad this was definitely by far worse than anything i've ever experienced and oh man i didn't even like couldn't even imagine this happening like you know what i mean like missing the show was like bad enough mm-hmm. but not having a way home was really bad and then have to spend four hundred dollars you know on christmas time and stuff like pff, it was bad jeez well so 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 you've you've I, is there a lesson from this other than not, don't use WestJet? uh yeah so <laughs> don't use WestJet ever i didn't, I didn't, i've never heard of it i've honestly never heard of it <sighs> i've flown with them once yeah uh, but it was only a flight i think it was like West Jet from Quebec City to Toronto, and then I got on like Air Canada. So are they? They're like a Canada International kind of thing, probably. Yeah, maybe. Okay. 
Okay. I don't know. Um, they suck. That's all I know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but who sucks now? WestJet. West <laughs> um, but slogan. I don't really know. It, I'm trying to figure out what the lesson here was. I, I don't know if it was, hey, maybe Dylan don't do uh, East Coast to West <laughs> Coast in one night. I, I don't know. I mean, because I'm literally going from East Coast Canada yeah, on yeah, the coast yeah. to West Coast in California and uh, literally uh, the diagonally sh- yeah and the sh- the show that we do in uh in in California is literally filmed in the ocean view pavilion where the ocean is right there so i mean when i say coast to coast like i'm on the coast so you're <laughs> traveling as far as you possibly can in north america yeah. over a weekend yeah i don't know i'm crazy <laughs> At least you're relatively in the middle with Pittsburgh, which not even that. Jeez, uh, it's great, great seeing you uh, out there. A lot of success. Um, I hope you don't mind. I, I bring it up, but you, you put a story out. I think this is why you were doing a lot of stuff on the West Coast. Okay. Uh, about um, kind of your dealings with WWE. Okay. And like, I think there was like a health uh, issue around that. Do you mind talking about that a little bit? Because I, I think it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of an interesting story, and and. Um, one people don't hear about. Yeah, you know, I, like I don't really care to hide it anymore because yeah, the the major company that like I was really hiding it from, which I shouldn't have been, um, is WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody knows that you know I had my little thing with WWE and ended up having a match with Ryback, and then I was um on Raw once, and then a pay per view and some other things. But um, my last time at WWE. I went in and I, I failed a physical because uh, of my heart condition, and which I told him that I did. I had a heart condition, but I didn't tell him that I had surgery. And then uh, the doctor, it was, you know, they were going through a tough time with some lawsuits and stuff. So they were very, very strict on their, uh, you know, their physical process and stuff. Um, but they, um, they wouldn't clear me to have my match. Um, I was there for five days, I think it was, because I was there. I did a house show. A uh, pay-per-view, Raw, and SmackDown. So four days. I was there for four days and uh, didn't get to do anything because I couldn't get physically cleared um, because they wanted to see my medical history and I couldn't really get that because um, it was so long ago and I didn't really have the proper clearance from the doctor right right then and there. Um, but the way that like they were doing it like kind of freaked me out. I was like, man, like he seemed concerned like there might be something wrong with my heart again or something because well, like, ev- like they might discover something yeah while they like, were going over you yeah i was like oh maybe i'm messed up or whatever which so it really was a blessing in disguise and like i you know thank god that like this happened because now i'm going to my checkups and stuff like i need to be um but anyway i it was when i moved back to pittsburgh and uh it was literally i was moving back to pittsburgh my car was filled with mine and rachel's car was filled with all of our stuff because we were doing this wwe loop and then we were coming to pittsburgh to move um but anyway um i went to the doctor and i got looked at and da 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 and and i'm cleared i'm good i'm healthy um you know i'm physically active um so everything's good and good to go. Um, but it's been a, it's been a long time. So it's been like four years and I've been really trying to get back and get another tryout and an opportunity with WWE. I don't know, you know, if it was that they were worried about my condition or whatever mm-hmm. that I had, um, or if they were mad at me or whatever the case was. Cause you know, technically I did lie to them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, it's been, it's been a real struggle because when you're told like, Hey, your childhood dream, like, Oh yeah, you got a little sip of it but now you're done yeah like i thought it was over like i thought my career was over right then and there like as a as a real career um but yeah it's been it's been really tough and but i think that those kind of things are what makes you who you are um so it's been a struggle and i've always been told my whole life that i wasn't gonna be able to do it and then i did it you know what i mean so um but hopefully there's some good news coming soon um yeah, we'll we'll just see how that goes. But uh, and say so obviously you're doing insane loops around the country, countries, uh, and this is a different environment now where it's not WWE or bus too. Like there are people, you know, are you looking at kind of inspiration from these guys that are kind of just kind of living on the indies and and making careers of that or Japan or other options like that? Yeah, I've I've talked, you know, with Kevin Kelly about New Japan possibly. Um, mm. 
you know, I've talked with people in Ring of Honor. Bob Evans is a big supporter of mine. And, and awesome guy, and, awesome guy. Yeah, and these people are just such great people that I don't really, I don't care like where I end up. I want to actually really wrestle for all of them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If I could mm-hmm. go to New Japan and Ring of you Honor, you got one down. Yeah, <laughs> WWE. Yeah, if I can go to New Japan and Ring of Honor and then go to WWE, that'd be great. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah, WWE yeah. signs me tomorrow. You okay. go to New Japan, you can face Ray Rowe again. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> who cares about Ray Rowe? Enough of him. But uh, <laughs> right, right, right. But but uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and it's a you know it's it's, it's a condition of, of concern, but it's a it it doesn't physically keep you from being in the ring and active. Like there's no there's no danger in that inherently, right? right. Like it's just a maybe WWE making sure everything's like all every all the dots. Or uh, you know, eyes are dotted and everything. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I'm I'm super healthy. I've been an athlete my whole life, um, and I know that WWE has to take you know their their measures and check everybody how they are and make sure they're okay because they don't want to deal with a lawsuit or whatever. And no, you know, we know what what's going on with Daniel Bryan and, and his situation. So I mean, uh, I don't know. We'll just see where it goes. Yeah. But I mean, I think I'm doing all right in my career. You know, I I got a lot of money. I got a lot of money. He's going to need an escort to his car after this now. We have a giant window, and he oh, just man. threw a Oops. bag of wind- <laughs> a bag. But, of yeah, money. I'm doing okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, that's great. Another first for this show. Um, uh, we do have some questions from the chat room. Oh, first of all, Vincent says, keep pushing, bro. Oh, thanks, Vincent. Appreciate that, bro. Uh, and uh, Bobby, Bobby F. J. Town, who uh, you talked with Bobby at the Royal Valley. Yeah. Uh, about, actually, about that one time with Ryback and how you got your name over. Do you want to share a little bit about that? that, Hey, if you want to, Hey, he's your buddy. If you want to. So apparently, um, (laughs) uh, Matt McCarthy on, on, uh, the, we watch wrestling podcast was talking about, uh, that time when you were there. And I think it was, your name was his old college roommate. His college roommate, yes. Um, it was actually, it's actually funny that you bring that up. So before you introduced me to him, um, well, reintroduced me to him, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, my buddy w- called me one day. He's like, dude, I was just hearing some interview. This guy was talking about how he was the writer in WWE and gave you his, your name. And he said that was his favorite thing he ever wrote in WWE. He's like, what the hell is that? Like, what are the odds <laughs> in that? And I was like, it, bro, you're like messing with me, dude. Mm-hmm. You didn't hear. He's like, no, I swear. And then a couple other people said the same exact thing. And I just, I thought it was funny. Right. But then when I see him at IWC, I'm thinking, dude, this is weird. Like, so crazy. That was, I, and you, you know, I remember you were like, you showed your eyes like, dude, I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. I like that moment at WWE, like was literally a dream come true. Like even if like no, whatever anyone wants to say, Oh, you got your ass kicked in five minutes or whatever. I don't like care. Um, literally just walking down to that rank, just standing in gorilla, gorilla position, mm-hmm. like was insane. Like that is what you've, you've and, literally done this for. And being on the microphone in the ring. And being on, on the microphone. On Smackdown, on wasn't Smackdown. it? Yeah. I yeah. was on, on the microphone and Smackdown and like having a picture with a WWE microphone in front of my face and then mm-hmm. like being in WWE that like is a dream come true. Like if you're in the wrestling business and you got that little opportunity, dude, that's, that's it. You've done it. You've made that's it. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like, like people talk about James Ellsworth, you know, like, Oh, he, he, he sucks. Da, 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 da. He's just a jobber. Dude, he's living his dream, man. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. That dude's lucky. Like, and, and a guy that you're like, oh, what's that guy going to do with the WWE, right? Like, we've seen that. Colin Delaney is another one. And, yeah. he's, and Delaney is is light years better than when he was there. Same with Zach Allen. If you see yeah. a match with them, they're in the best shapes of their lives, you know, yeah. in comparison sometimes. I love James Ellsworth, dude. Like, yeah, he's so good. He's an entertainer, man. Yeah. Like, I think IWC needs a book, Dylan Bostic versus James Ellsworth. That has to be like a match. Maybe super indie or something. I don't know. That has to be a match. Yeah, is, or Night of Superstars. Superstars is coming up. Night of Superstars, Asterix, and James Ellsworth. Yeah. Exactly. That'd be great. Brendan Burke <laughs> versus James Ellsworth. <laughs> <laughs> the new feud of the century. Uh, um, okay, so we had uh, Bobby. Uh, I was getting to Bobby and Vincent both uh, more or less asked, like, who's been your favorite opponent or a person you've wrestled so far? You know, Ryback. Uh, <laughs> no, Ryback's cool. I like Ryback. He's good. He's a good, dude. Um, well, 
I have a, a favorite opponent and a favorite match of mine. Uh, a guy that I've worked with since like the beginning of me in wrestling. Uh, we came up together. Um, you might know him, Jake Oman. He's in Wrestle One in Japan. Well, Jake and I have like feuded all over Indiana for for many years. And um, a couple years ago, we had. I guess you would say like our f- like final battle, our big blow off. Cause the the thing about it was, it was kind of weird that it was such a good match and the fans were so into it because I hadn't really wrestled in Indiana for like a couple years at this point or several years. So he started running a wrestling show and, and, um, in Fishers, Indiana. And, and that's near where my family's from. Da 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 da. And he's like, Hey man, like, you know, me and you da 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 da. We'll have this big match. And, it, it just was so good. It was 40 minutes long. The, at least the, the video was so the wrestling part was probably about 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, we came up together and we, you know, we grew as, as performers and wrestlers together. And then just to have that, that big match. And like, it was just crazy how into it the fans were. Um, even though, you know, it was just a few hundred people, but Oh man, it was, it was, it was a heck of a match. And, uh, I still look back at that, that match and just think, man, like that was awesome. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> Um, anything or any of the promotions you've been visiting or anything you've been watching has anything caught your attention, anything you're looking out for, um, that you think other people should be checking out? There's like, I say this a lot the, today is a good day to be in wrestling really. Cause I think wrestling is on the up and up. If you, if you pay attention to the numbers and, and stuff like that, indie wrestling is thriving. You know, WWE will always be thriving. Um, but there's so many places to work for you have you know new japan ring of honor impact wrestling wwe you know uh nwa is coming back and i think that's going to be another big place to wrestle for championship wrestling from hollywood there's so many platform platforms you know to be on national television to make a living at wrestling and and i it's just it's crazy how much how many places there are right now absolutely uh what is the well, we know the worst thing is the flights. Um, <laughs> other than that, what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling since we've seen you last? The best and worst things. You know, the worst things, I think, honestly, wouldn't be the flights, really. It is the dri- like Whenever you're doing the drives, which I actually do enjoy driving. I like traveling and stuff. Um, that's another reason why I really love wrestling. Um, but what really pisses me off is when I'm driving several hours on a turnpike that I've got to pay money for, I got to pay money to drive on this road. And then at night, everything's going to be closed. Like there's no food. If you're going to get anything to eat, it's like their little convenience store, like gas station food. Like it's like, dude, how are you going to close your restaurants on a turnpike that I'm paying to drive on? Mm -hmm. Like that drives me nuts. Like that is the absolute worst thing. Jeez. No respect. No respect None. for the nighttime drivers. Zero. Best thing since you've been out? Best thing since I've been out. Man, I don't know. Mm, that's a tough one. You know, there's a lot There's a lot of good the things. The bags of money, wrestling. apparently. <laughs> this, this big bag of money. The big bag of money. <laughs> hold that, you can hold, hold that bag of money up. It looks like straight out of a movie, guys. That's a that's, <laughs> I just brought that for you, just to show off. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, it's probably the money. The money's been a lot better, so. <laughs> Got to get it back in the morning, Clearly. right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Dylan Bostic, where can people po- find you online? I know a lot of people already know where you're at. Um, well, you know, I, I am big on social media. You know, I don't really like Facebook. I don't really like Instagram. Twitter's cool, I guess. I actually hate social media, but um, so my Facebook is facebook.com backslash Dylan Bostic official. My Instagram is instagram.com backslash Dylan Bostic. My Twitter is at Dylan underscore Bostic. My, 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 my social media handles are all over the place. I know it sucks. That's great. Uh, of course, you're showing up in IWC. Uh, what other promotions uh, generally are, are you going to be in in the near future? Uh, there, there's a couple maybe surprises coming up, um, but you know, who knows, who knows where I'm going to end up, but IWC, NSPW in Quebec city and championship wrestling from Hollywood and California are guarantees. 
Um, other than that, it'll be you know random shows and stuff. But um, but those will be the main companies that I'll be working for. And again, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood is available on Fight TV. It's on Fight uh, TV. So and whatever, you check your local listings. I guess. Yeah, check your local <laughs> listings for the CW Network. Yeah. Um, we're on in the mornings. It depends on like what city and town you're in. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, just check your local listings, like your DVR or whatever, and uh, see if you get it. Um, a lot of people do. We're on like 200 and some channels. I want to say nice. 200 and some channels. Uh, so a lot look, of a lot of the CW networks. Look get out, us. Ring of Honor. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, Dylan Bostic. If you guys are catching it this week, make sure you come out if you're in the area. The IWC's winner takes all, and of course that will be up out afterwards on IndieWrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter for all the updates and releases and uh, interviews and, and everything we're doing over there. A lot of great stuff, and then you can go all the way back to to uh, uh, 2015 and. and and see the first time we talked with Dylan here on the show with Justin Plummer on as well. Episode 72, if you want to look that up. And we are creeping up on the 200s here on this show. Thank you so much. Thank you to uh, the chat room members that have joined us here live. And everybody that subscribed, please share the show. Share the interview if you like what's going on here. And if you have anybody you want us to t- talk to you in the near future, hit us up goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com. 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on Twitter or of course the Wrestling Mayhem Show and IndieWrestling.us Facebook pages. We'll see you guys next time and until then support Indie Wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.